we put the all-new Vredestein Pinza all-terrain tire to the test on pavement, dirt, and snow with our 2022 Ford Maverick Lariat FX4. It's a tire test adventure on Driving Sports TV. Welcome to another mountain adventure with the 2022 Ford Maverick Lariat FX4 that we bought for the show. Now, we already have a complete video with a review of this vehicle, but if you want us to just get right into it, let's cover some of the details of this truck. Our long-term tester is a Lariat trim with both the towing and off-road FX4 packages. It features a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine good for 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. Power is sent to all four wheels through Ford's intelligent all-wheel drive system. The FX4 off-road package came standard with Pirelli Scorpion ATR tires, but those are a more road-oriented all-terrain than we like, so we're trying other all-terrain tire options to see which we prefer for rugged trails and unexpected weather. Today we're running the new Vredestein Pinza all-terrain, which we had installed at our local Les Schwab tire store. At Les Schwab Tires, we're super excited to have the new Pinza AT as part of our lineup. With its capable off-road performance, fantastic snow traction, and excellent manners for your daily commute, we think this tire is going to provide our customers an exceptional value. We selected the Pinza in a 245-65-17 fitment, which is a little bit larger than stock. They were sent to us by Vredestein for this video. A set of four costs about $900 and includes a 70,000-mile warranty. Even in this larger size, the tires cleared the fenders without rubbing, and the full-size spare fit under the bed. You'll also notice that we changed the wheels out. Now, we did that, first of all, because I think these look amazing, but also, I could not buy a fifth matching wheel from Ford. I like the black wheels that this came with, but the wheels are unobtainium right now. And I wanted a full set of matching wheels, so I got the LP ones, and I got five of them. So we have four on the vehicle and one under the trunk. And yes, the full-size spare, even in these larger Pinzas, fit just fine. It really makes this truck look a lot more grown up. Now let's take a look at the tire. The Vredestein Pinza has a robust design on the shoulder and chunky blocks to assist with loose surface grip. The Sipes have an interlocking design to help with tread stability while still providing traction in the snow. Now let's head out and try all the different surfaces to see how these Pinzas work in the real world. On the highway here, the Pinzas are really quiet. Now I can feel a little bit of the knobbiness in my steering wheel, but it is subtle. And in terms of road noise, yeah, there's none of that thromming that you can hear with an all-terrain. Yeah, these are great. The fact that they're also warrantied for up to 70,000 miles kind of blows my mind. In the Pacific Northwest, it's really nice to have a tire that does it all because if you're a fan of the outdoors here, you kind of want to do it all. I mean, you might be in the snow one weekend, you might be in the mud the next weekend, and then of course you have to commute on pavement every day. So yeah, an all-terrain is so suitable for so many SUV and truck owners. This one so far is pretty good. Now, is it any good once we actually take it off the asphalt or is this, it's one big trick? That'll be interesting to find out. And of course, yeah, we're gonna find out right now. So we are driving up to Lion Rock today, and that's going to take us all the way up to about five, 6,000 feet. So I can pretty much guarantee there will be snow. The nature of the snow is what I'm curious about. Is it melty and icy, or is it uh, fluffy and light? Who knows? I scouted this location yesterday, and it had just started snowing and was supposed to snow overnight. So we could see several inches which I'm kind of excited by. This will be the first snow drive of the year. Yeah, we did a little bit of snow with the BF Goodrich trail terrains just recently, but that really wasn't much. I, I want to really dig in and see some serious snow. And maybe we'll get to try out the uh, three peak rating on these Pinzas. Yeah, because they are three peak rated, which means that they're also suitable for snowy conditions. Now, you should never use an all-terrain as a substitute for a proper snow tire. 
However, for many people who don't encounter snow all the time, these might be good enough. So this is US Forest Service Road 9705. Okay, and here we go. Okay, initial impressions on a kind of a rocky, gravelly road. Pretty good. I uh, kind of would expect this though, because this is a, a base default for any all-terrain tires can it handle gravel roads. And so far, this one is doing just fine. Now, as for the Maverick, it of course has Ford's intelligent all-wheel drive system with various modes. And because this has the FX4 package, it has two specific off-road modes. Uh, we'll get into those a little bit later if we need them. Now, of course, this being a front-wheel drive-based unibody truck, that means that power by default goes to the front wheels. As slip is detected or anticipated, it'll send more power to the back. It will never really send more than 50% to the back wheels, though theoretically it can send more. So there's a little crowding in the road and a little ditching. It's just the start of the wet season. Oh, I'm already seeing some snow on the side of the road actually. And I have to be really careful when there's a kind of a cliff face on the left, you gotta be careful of rocks, trees, pretty much anything that has fallen. And for those that are curious, yes, I do have a support vehicle. Uh, Nick is in his Lexus GX, and that has all of our support gear in it. So I'm not out here alone by myself. And yeah, we brought a chainsaw. Okay, and we're climbing up. The altitude is gaining quickly. And so yeah, snow on the side of the road and trees and rocks and sheer exposures. Let's take a look at this exposure. Oh man, that's pretty. So of course, as we increase altitude, the chance of more snow grows. Also, it's wet. It's so wet. Things have been dry for a really long time here, and then with the added wetness, it kind of creates this gumminess and slickeriness with the mud. Uh, so far, no reason to change drive modes. I also have not aired down my tires. Uh, I do know that I am going to air down as we get closer uh, to the snow, not just for increased traction in the snow, but also just want a more comfortable ride on the rocks. Now, I do have to be careful here. I'm starting to see little patches of ice on the road. Uh, that could lend itself to being very slickery, especially because we're right at freezing, um, actually a little bit warmer than freezing ambient. Uh, and so that's gonna make it kind of really icy and slick if there's enough of it to cause that issue. Oh, we got a tree down, gotta watch for those. This is kind of nice. It's just so pleasant to come out here on a fairly smooth forest road. Yeah, there's a little bit of road noise, but no big deal really. Oop, that was icy. <laughs> oh man, that's a lot of ice on the side of the road now. It's going to be wet and wild today, that's for sure. So this main line has so far been pretty easy. I think I'm going to pull off and try to find something a little more complex so we can really test out these tires uh, before we urgently need all our capabilities. Oh, there's a little snow on the ground too. Ha ha, yes. How does this hold? Ah, pretty good. Now, this is a three peak winter rated tire, which is really cool. Uh, so if it gets a little snowy, we shouldn't have any issues. But this is what I wanna try. That is quite a climb. Now, how much of a climb? Let's find out using the tools on this truck and, and like, all smart people, I'm gonna look at the course first. <laughs> okay, it looks steep. Actually, it's kind of crazy steep. The surface is a little loose, but it's really not too wet. It's not fully saturated, it's just moist. Uh, so we should have some grip here. I'm gonna put the vehicle in drive. I'm gonna change uh, the screens here so that I can see how much of an angle we have, because uh, this will measure it. Now I'm not changing any settings. This is just a normal. So if you plan on getting a Maverick, but you don't want to get the FX4 package, this is the same 
normal setting that you would have on your vehicle. So we're at 12 degrees, 15, 18, 19, 20, 20 degree, 21 degree climb. That seems to be the, the maximum. Oh, that is steep. Oh, it's a little slippery there. Tires are grabbing nice though. Arch over. Oh, and then we go down. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, really not a challenge at all for the Pinzas. Now this is slimier, muddier stuff here because it's at a trough basically where the water slides down. It looks slickery going back up this way. So I'm gonna now do the reverse course and see how well we do. Now that we got all that mud on the right hand side, hopefully you can see that uh, in this camera here. See, look at all that mud right there. <sighs> okay, so again, I am gonna keep this in normal mode. I will only engage one of the special FX4 modes if it is required. We're gonna go up super slow, see how these tires grip mud. Now these aren't like mud terrain tires, but I'd say they're doing pretty good. Oh, nice. These seem to work really well in conjunction with this intelligent all wheel drive system. Hmm. Oh, that's a nice view. Nice. Now going down uh, to maintain control, I am gonna enable hill descent control. Turn that on. So we're at a 12 degree angle right now. That's side to side. I'm gonna try to avoid the tree here. And I'm just gonna release the brake and let the car do the rest. Let's see how much grip we get with these tires. Ooh, nice. ABS is doing its job. Totally controlled. What else is down here? I think we need to explore. <laughs> you know, I wonder if we can do donuts with this. This is a big open area. Let's turn off traction control. Let's see, I'll hold it down. Traction control off. I'm also gonna go into sand mode because that should push power to the back, maximum amount. Okay, I have no idea if this vehicle can do this. Let's find out together. Whoop, 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 whoop. Slippery! Wow, that, that's super slippery. Because this is not a mud terrain tire, that means that it can load up with too much mud in the treads, which causes sticky problems. Whoop. <laughs> kind of a donut, kind of. Saddest donut ever. Ah. Uh... Let's try this again. And throttle. Eh, kind of. Ah, uh, tree. <laughs> okay, I think enough of that. Let's continue on. Switching drive mode back to normal and I'm turning traction control back on. Let's just see where this goes. What, what can we do here? Now I have to be careful because there is a lot of ice on this route and this will give me a good opportunity to feel how these deal with that kind of uh, tricky situation. I don't want to slide off a awkward camber and hit something. Okay, let's see if we can get through here. Go around the log. Oof, I get a feeling I'm gonna scratch my paint. Let's not do that. Little pinstriping over the logs, super slurpy, ah. and through we go.
Okay, so what did we learn in this section of the video? Well, the Redestein Penza can get loaded up with too much mud, but that is not exclusive to this tire. I've had Wild Peaks also have the same issue uh, because they are not mud terrain tires. That is the point of a mud terrain. But like a KO2 mud terrain, if you're going to run that, you're going to pay for it on pavement. So it's just not a good compromise solution. In my opinion, you just give up too much comfort. Okay, now we're going to continue on as it's getting crazy foggy here in the mountain. And we're going to try to get all the way up to Lion Peak. Um, yeah, hopefully this, uh, this works out. Okay, now we're getting on a little more gravelly surface. So when I bought this for the channel, I thought, you know, it'd be good for a bunch of videos. Uh, and of course, it's really helpful to have a truck when maintaining property because of course we have our own private off-road test course, uh, which does need some maintenance now that things are getting wet and that mud is getting crazy sticky. We're gonna have to figure out a solution for that. But more to the point here, uh, driving this Maverick, I've just really come to like this truck. This truck is just so much fun to drive. It's great on the highway. It's great on forced roads like this. No, it's not a rock crawler. Never pretends to be. I do look forward to hopefully a Tremor or some other more advanced off-road version of it because I think that, you know, it has the capability built into the design. They just need to add an extra inch of lift and add that twin clutched uh, rear drive unit from the Bronco Badlands. Put those together, you would have just a fantastic truck. I think the big concern for Ford would be that it might actually start to eat into Ranger sales. Oh, here's a puddle. Brace! Whoosh! Ha! <laughs> We are starting to get some real snow here. I mean, it's not like deep at all, but it is thoroughly covering the road and it's patchiness between grip and no grip. So I'm gonna have to take it easy here. Uh, also, if you notice, there are a lot of dead trees and that's because a forest fire came through here. Some of the trees survived, some didn't. Uh, some kind of halfway survived. Uh, so the trees do look really weird here. Just, just in case you're curious. I know whenever we show these trees, there's a lot of comments about the trees and what could have caused it. So it was a forest fire. Now, you know, there was even a sign back there that said forest fire caution for landslides and stuff because there's nothing holding the road together at this point. Got to watch for uh, other people on the road. That's a bit of a drop. So far, I have to say these tires are giving me really good confidence and that's what you want in a tire, right? I find that, you know, other than loading them completely up with mud, which nothing can deal with very well outside of a mud terrain, uh, this is doing great. I mean, by their nature, an all-terrain tire is a compromise. It's in the name. Uh, the question is, is how much of a compromise are they? Whoa, that is so cool. Looks very slidey too, and not in a good way. Lots of rocks have fallen down with the recent snow and rain. You can tell that they built the road here and mother nature is not necessarily having it. Wow, this is uh, sheer exposure on the side of a rock face. Okay, I'm okay. Confidence in the tires, yeah. Actually, no, seriously, these tires are, are doing decent. They are uh, not intended primarily as a snow tire, but their grip level is definitely better than an all season, that's for sure. Oh boy, we are starting to get into the slippery stuff. And that is such a long drop. So I'm gonna dial back my speed a little bit here as we're slowly advancing up the mountain. For those of you not from around the Pacific Northwest, let me explain what our snow is like. It is part ice, part water, and super slippery. It is not something that you want to take lightly, even a little bit of it. Uh, in the back east, I know you guys get your super cold snow and that stuff's fine and all, but on hills, the slippery stuff is a challenge. Okay, and it is definitely getting wider out here. You can feel a little bit of slippering under the tires. I did grab some chains, so I have those with me if things get super gnarly. Although the idea here is to test the tire out. Anything is good with a chain. Oh, 
Yeah, we're getting a little uh, a little wheel spinny here as we're climbing, and it's mostly because of the tilt that we're on right now. I mean, we're we're at a five degree tilt as we're climbing up here, and of course, any tilt can be a slippery tilt. So to make my life a little bit easier, I am going to switch the Maverick into snow mode. Oop, that's hill descent. All these buttons look the same. Uh, da, 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 da. Slippery, I guess. Slippery is what they call it. Oh, and here we go. This is our turn to the mountain. As we're climbing higher up, there's more dead trees, of course, because of the uh, forest fires that have gone through here. And it is getting pretty slick in spots. And it's a combination of mud, ice, water. It all combines to create this like slurpy broth that's really challenging to drive on. But so far, the tires are doing great. And I really wish we had these weather conditions for the last tire test we did. Uh, but sometimes you just cannot plan these things. It is, as we're filming this, uh, the first second day of November and this is a very early snow for the Pacific Northwest so we are taking advantage of it. Now like with all tires you have to understand what your capabilities are you know where where does your ability to drive in the ice and snow lie. You cannot rely solely on your tire. Uh, the tire is just a tool. Um, you also have to have an understanding of how uh, vehicle dynamics work in these conditions and it's starting to get really rocky uh, I'm going to pull over and air down my tires, I think. Uh, and I think we're going to drop them down to about 20 PSI. You don't have to air your tires down in most situations. Uh, I am doing it purely for comfort because I know coming up, I've done this leg before, uh, it is very rocky. And uh, when Les Schwab put the tires on, they did these at maximum street pressure. So they are really, really firm. So by reducing air, I'm gonna get a softer driving experience. And because these are 17 inch wheels with a big chunky sidewall, I have a lot of room to spare. So what I'm gonna be using here is what's called an easy deflator. A lot of different companies make these. You can get them at Amazon or wherever. What they do is you screw it on, you pull the actual valve stem out, and then you can control how much air goes out while you're looking at the gauge. It's really handy. And it airs down much quicker because you are pulling the full valve stem assembly out of the tire nipple, which is pretty awesome. So I put these just down to 20 PSI, uh, which should be enough to give us a more comfortable ride. This is basically just to appease all of you guys on YouTube who say, you never air down. See, I do sometimes. And on we go. So my gauge cluster is now going to warn me that my tire pressures are low. Actually, it looks like it's 22 on all corners. So that tire pressure gauge was a little bit off. It's OK. Good enough. So does it smooth things out a little bit? Yeah. A lot of people don't think about how much the tire is part of your whole suspension package. And what I've done is I've basically made it from the air uh, part of the package uh, to being a lot more comfortable, basically. I've made it softer, and that makes a road like this so much easier. I mean, granted, yeah, this still is a fairly firm suspension in this vehicle, and 20 PSI is a fairly conservative um, level of airing down, but it does improve the situation. Also, because it creates a larger contact patch under the tire, uh, it actually gives me better traction in the snow. And all-terrain tires are designed to be aired down. The Vredestein Pinza is no exception. So far, 
great grip with these tires. I mean, it's definitely more compacted snow than it was before, but the Redestein Penzas are working great. This little, little spot here. Okay, and then finally, off to Lion Rock. We've almost made it. So road conditions like this are probably the most common ones that people will run into because this is very similar uh, to the kind of snow that you get when you get a light, um, you know, slushing in the lowlands. Uh, we're talking probably about an inch of snow. It's compacted in spots. It's icy in spots. There's water. Uh, and it, it can be pretty slickery. Um, I will say that these tires are doing good. The three peak rating is legit on these uh, Vredestein Pinzas. And I think they're doing a really good job. Now, the funny thing with these tires is you always look for an Achilles heel. Like the KO2, uh, horrible on ice and snow. I mean, as far as all terrains go. That's my personal opinion on them. Uh, but so good in other extreme conditions. Uh, the Falcon Wild Peak, pretty good in all situations, very nice uh, road manners, but it is a little loud between 30 and 40 miles an hour. There's a little bit of a reverberation there that's kind of annoying, uh, but I, again, I'm being super picky. I still really like the Falcon Wild Peaks. Uh, these ones kind of, they're like a Falcon Wild Peak, but better every day, and they warranty them to 70,000 miles, which kind of blows my mind. I mean, that is a really long warranty for an all-terrain tire. It puts it right up there with, you know, a decent all season, which is kind of shocking. But we haven't made it yet. We still have a final climb. And um, last time, this had a little bit of snow, but it was mostly rock. This time, it's mostly snow. I don't know if we're gonna see any rock. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> So this is First Creek Trail number 1374, right there. I feel it's slippery. Now I know that it gets really rocky as we're going up this climb. It's kind of one of the main reasons why I wanted to air down. Of course, that section back there was also pretty, uh, pretty bumpy, but uh, airing down kind of smoothed it out. Do you have to air down? No, yeah, probably not. Not in conditions like this, but it does make things a little bit nicer. Oh yeah, final climb. It's doing pretty good, actually. I'm feeling a little bit of slip, but you know, a tire doesn't um, doesn't make physics go away. <laughs> I got loads of traction. It's comfortable. Power is getting distributed as necessary. No complaints. And we made it. We made it all the way up. And here we are, finally, at Lion Rock. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There we go. When Freda Stein approached us with these new Pinzas, I thought, eh, you know, they'll be okay. But I have to say, I think they're my new favorite tire. They're pretty amazing. They got through everything that we wanted today. We had no issues with them. The whole idea of an all-terrain tire is that it is a compromise. The question is, is just how much of a compromise? And I find with these tires, there just really wasn't much of one. Now granted, in super sticky, sloppy mud, yeah, you want a mud terrain. It's not a mud terrain, but it did good. In ice and snow, you want a winter tire that's designed for ice and snow but it still did good. And in the rocks, we aired it down, super comfortable, had tons of grip. Overall, really impressed. So that's our look at the Vredestein Pinza attached to our 2022 Ford Maverick Lariat FX4. It was a fun day today. I had fun, hopefully you had fun too. Be sure to subscribe, like, share our videos. We make them for you and we hope you enjoy them. Until next time, drive safe.